Hi, today we are going to describe anatomy of thyroid gland. In this session we will cover gross anatomy of thyroid gland, it is development, histology, innervation and clinical aspects. Thyroid gland is a white butterfly shaped endocrine gland located in the lower part of neck. It plays an essential role in regulation of basal metabolic rate and stimulates somatic and psychic growth besides having vital role in calcium metabolism. Thyroid is the first endocrine gland to develop in body. It consists of two lobes, right and left, which are connected by isthmus. Sometimes a third lobe is present, which is called pyramidal lobe. This lobe originates from isthmus of thyroid gland. It extends from fifth cervical to first thoracic vertebra. The lobes of the thyroid gland extend from middle of thyroid cartilage to fifth tracheal ring. Enlargement of thyroid gland is seen during menstrual cycles and pregnancy. Each lobe is conical in shape and has a base and an apex with two borders, anterior and posterior, separating three surfaces, medial, lateral and posterior lateral. Isthmus has got two borders, superior and inferior, separating anterior and posterior surfaces. The lobes of thyroid gland are related anteriorly to second superficial fascia, deep cervical fascia and platysma. Posteriorly, the lobes are associated with lamina of the thyroid cartilage and tracheal rings and laterally to the external carotid artery and internal jugular vein. Thyroid gland is butterfly shaped gland. Its two lobes correspond to wings of the butterfly and body of the butterfly corresponds to its isthmus. As already said, lobes of thyroid gland extend superiorly from oblique line of the thyroid cartilage to the fifth tracheal ring. These levels correspond to C3 to T1. The isthmus of the thyroid gland rests on the second and third tracheal rings. Pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland originates from isthmus. It is present in roughly 50% of thyroid glands. Each lobe is 5 by 2.5 by 5 centimeters in dimension. The average weight of thyroid gland is 14 to 25 grams. Each lobe is conical in shape and has a base and apex. It has two borders anterior and posterior which separate three surfaces lateral, medial and posterior lateral. The isthmus however has two surfaces anterior and posterior separated by superior and inferior borders. Now let us come to the capsules of thyroid gland. How do capsules of thyroid gland differ from capsules of the prostate? As shown in this diagram, thyroid is enclosed in two capsules. True capsule is the inner capsule of the gland. It is derived from connective tissue condensation. False capsule is the outer capsule of the gland, it is derived from pretracheal layer of deep cervical fascia. Deep to the true capsule lies thyroid venous plexus. During thyroidectomy, gland is removed along with subcapsular venous plexus and true capsule. You can remember it as T stands for true, it lies towards the gland, F stands for further, it lies away from the gland. In thyroidectomy, we remove three structures T for thyroid, T for three that is thyroid gland, subcapsular venous plexus, and true capsule, leaving behind only false capsule of the gland. As already said, thyroid gland is first endocrine gland to develop it is endodermal in origin develops from third and fourth pharyngeal pouches. Parafollicular cells are derived from ultimobrachial body that is fifth pharyngeal pouch. No other structure of the thyroid gland is derived from ultimobrachial body. So ultimobrachial body gives origin only to the parafollicular cells of thyroid gland. Thyroid begins to develop 
at 24 days after fertilization during craniofacial development endodermal cells migrate to form and cecum from their thyroglossal duct descends into neck lower or caudal end of the thyroglossal duct divides into two lobes of the thyroid at 11 weeks of gestation so caudal end of this thyroglossal duct divides into two lobes the endodermal cells in these lobes proliferate and develop into thyroid gland what are the nerve relations of the thyroid gland thyroid gland as shown in this diagram receives its blood supply from superior and inferior thyroid arteries the superior thyroid artery is related to nerve to cricothyroid which is a branch of superior laryngeal nerve this vessel is ligated as close as possible to gland to secure nerve to cricothyroid during thyroid surgeries because superior thyroid artery acts as a guide it helps us to identify the nerve and inferior thyroid artery is related to recurrent laryngeal nerve which is also ligated as close as possible to the inferior pole of the thyroid gland to prevent blood supply to parathyroid glands parathyroid glands derive their blood supply supply from terminal branches of inferior thyroid artery so in order to prevent their blood supply we ligate these vessels as close as possible to the gland as shown in this diagram thyroid receives its blood supply from superior thyroid artery which is a branch of external carotid artery another source of blood supplies inferior thyroid artery which is a branch of thyrocervical trunk third uncommon source of blood supply which is present in 3% of the population is called thyroid emma artery emma means unpaired this vessel may arise either from arch of aorta right common carotid artery or brachiocephalic trunk what is venous drainage of the thyroid thyroid veins do not follow arteries they begin from subcapsular venous plexus there are usually three veins superior middle and inferior superior thyroid vein drains into internal jugular vein middle vein also drains into internal jugular vein and inferior thyroid vein drains into brachiocephalic vein what is cocker's vein sometimes fourth vein is present when present it emerges from thyroid gland between middle and inferior thyroid veins and drains into the into internal jugular vein this vein is important surgically in this animation you can see the venous drainage of thyroid which drains through superior middle and inferior thyroid vein lymphaticus of thyroid gland are very important because it is through these lymphaticus malignancies of the thyroid gland spread to distant lymph nodes these lymphaticus follow arteries from upper pole lymphaticus pass to anterior superior group of deep cervical group of lymph nodes through superior thyroid artery from lower pole lymphaticus follow inferior thyroid artery to reach posterior inferior group of lymph nodes located posterior to carotid sheath a few lymph nodes follow course of thyroid emma artery and drain into pretracheal group of lymph nodes now let us go to the histology of thyroid gland thyroid gland consists of many lobules containing follicles the follicles contain a homogeneous acidophilic material called colloid the follicles are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium but the epithelium may be columnar or squamous depending upon the activity of gland if the gland is hyperactive it is lined by columnar epithelium if the gland is hypoactive it is lined by squamous epithelium each follicle is composed of acne each acne has a central lumen filled with colloid each acne is lined by epithelium resting on basement membrane these cells resting on the basement membrane are called follicular cells clear cells or parafollicular cells constitute 2% of the total cells lining a follicle these cells lie between the epithelium and basement membrane as shown in this diagram each follicle is filled with colloid 
and is lined by follicular epithelium between the basement membrane and the bases of follicular cells lie parafollicular cells now what are functions of thyroid gland production of hormones is an important function of thyroid gland the principal hormones being triiodothyronine also called t3 tetraiodothyronine also called t4 or thyroxine these hormones are synthesized from iodine and tyrosine and regulate the somatic and psychic growth and functions of many systems in the body where from calcitonin comes parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland which are derived from the ultimobrachial body produce calcitonin which plays an important role in calcium hemostasis calcitonin decreases serum calcium level regulation of hormone production hormonal output from the thyroid gland is regulated by thyroid stimulating hormone tsh produced by anterior pituitary which itself is regulated by thyrotropin releasing hormone trh produced by hypothalamus hypothalamus secretes trh thyroid releasing hormone which acts on the pituitary gland and makes it to secrete tsh thyroid stimulating hormone acting on the thyroid gland as a result of this thyroid gland to secrete t3 and t4 into peripheral blood when there is excess secretion of t3 and t4 by negative feedback mechanism secretion of trh and tsh is decreased resulting in decreased production of t3 and t4 innervation of thyroid gland the principal innervation of thyroid gland is derived from autonomic nervous system role of parasympathetic fibers is unknown they come from vagus nerve to supply the thyroid gland sympathetic fibers are vasomotor in nature these fibers originate from middle and superior cervical ganglion but mainly from middle cervical ganglion from middle cervical ganglion sympathetic fibers reach the gland through inferior thyroid artery and from superior cervical ganglion they reach the gland through superior thyroid artery the role of sympathetic fibers is vasomotor now let us go to some clinical problems what is hypothyroidism it is a clinical disorder resulting due to decrease in thyroid hormones these patients present with weight gain bradycardia that is decrease in heart rate constipation easy fatigability females suffering from hypothyroidism also present with menstrual disorders and infertility in this diagram a represents the picture of the patient who is suffering from hypothyroidism that is decreased levels of t3 and t4 b represents the picture of the same patient after treatment with aldrosterone what is goiter what is goiter abnormal enlargement of thyroid gland due to iodine deficiency is called goiter hyperthyroidism results due to excess thyroid hormones they may be exogenous or endogenous i want to summarize my lecture as thyroid is an endocrine gland located in neck it is endodermal in origin and first gland to develop in body it secretes three hormones t3 t4 and calcitonin it is highly vascular and is enclosed in two capsules this gland is important for brain development and metabolism now let us go for a quiz based on this lecture which among the following is the largest endocrine gland ovary pituitary thyroid parathyroid c is correct option which of the following arteries is unpaired superior thyroid inferior thyroid thyroid ema superior laryngeal c is correct option ema means unpaired the ideal site for ligation of inferior thyroid artery should be as close as possible to the gland as away as possible from the gland midway between its origin and recurrent laryngeal nerve before the vessel crosses the recurrent laryngeal nerve during thyroid surgery inferior thyroid artery should be ligated as close as possible to the gland to preserve the blood supply of parathyroid glands calcitonin is secreted by parathyroid cells follicular cells of the thyroid parathyroid gland follicular cells of thyroid parafollicular cells of thyroid both b and c 
C is correct option. Which of the following anatomical structures is left behind after thyroidectomy? True capsule, polis capsule, venous plexus, none of the above. After thyroid surgery, we remove three things. What is the difference between the capsules of thyroid gland and prostate? Thyroid gland is enclosed in two capsules. Venous plexus lies deep to true capsule, whereas in case of prostate, venous plexus lies between true and false capsule. Surgical importance in thyroidectomy gland is removed along with true capsule, whereas in case of prostate, adenoma is shelled out, leaving behind both true and false capsules and venous plexus between them. As shown in this animation, thyroid gland is enclosed in two capsules, true and false. During thyroidectomy, we remove thyroid gland along with true capsule and venous plexus located deeper to it. The only thing left behind is polis capsule of thyroid gland. In contrast, prostate is enclosed in two capsules, true and false. Venous plexus lies between the two capsules. We shell out the adenoma, leaving behind true and false capsules with venous plexus between them. True capsule of thyroid is derived from condensation of the connective tissue, pretracheal layer of deep cervical fascia, prevertebral layer, both B and C. Parafollicular cells are derived from which pharyngeal pouch? Second, third, fourth, fifth. Parafollicular cells are derived from fifth brachial pouch. None of the structures other than parafollicular cells are derived from fifth pharyngeal pouch. Parafollicular cells constitute what percentage of lining cells of an SNS? 2%, 3%, 10%, 15%. A is correct option. Thyroid emo artery is present in what percentage of thyroid glands? 1, 3, 5, 7. It is present in 3% of thyroid glands. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Thank you.